Imagine we are witnessing a singularity event in our lifetime. We create something that is infinitely more intelligent than all of humanity combined. What would the world look like? Is this humanity's final invention? Are we causing our own extinction or are we building utopia? We look at both cases and whatever is in between. First of all, we need to clarify the difference between AGI and ASI. This video is about ASI, which is a term most people are not familiar with yet. AGI is usually referred to when you talk about human-level intelligence, and that includes all cognitive capabilities that humans have. ASI, on the other hand, means surpassing human-level intelligence in virtually every domain or task. ASI would be capable of recursive self-improvement, leading to an exponential increase in intelligence, which could potentially result in a singularity event. So in a world with an ASI slash a singularity, which I will treat as equivalent for simplicity in this video, we would have something that is magnitudes more intelligent than humanity. And that is the starting point for this video. Before we can talk about the different implications and scenarios this has, I want to address one topic that is important here. This is a discussion where people often have very strong opinions. You are of course free to express them in the comments. I won't call you naive for believing this will end the human race, and I also won't call you naive if you are hopeful that it does the exact opposite, that it will cure all of our diseases and levels up human civilization on the Kardashev scale. But I would like to ask the same of you. Try to empathize with people's point of views. It's a situation where we don't really know a lot, and we certainly don't know what we don't know. It's all hypothetical. The worst case is, frankly, human extinction. Then dystopia, which may ultimately lead to extinction as well because of unsustainability. Then there is like a neutral ground in the middle, utopia and maybe even some kind of ascendance where we become demigods or something like that. To me, the least probable case is actually the neutral one. I believe the implications of ASI are so vast that I simply can't believe that the world will basically stay the same. I also won't really talk about the demigod case, that just seems too far away for my imagination. So we are left with these three. Let's look at the worst case scenario before building our utopia. I recently saw this tweet and it made me think quite a bit. The odds that we are experiencing an arbitrary slice of history for an arbitrary species on an arbitrary planet seems increasingly unlikely. Sure, you can make the case that every generation thinks that way. But is there really anything comparable to what we could potentially experience in our lifetime? It doesn't really matter if you think ASI is only a couple of years away or if it's multiple decades. In comparison to how long humanity has existed, it's just weird to think about that we could witness what some claim to be is humanity's final invention. The statement ties in nicely with the Fermi paradox. It's the apparent contradiction between the high probability of the existence of extraterrestrial civilizations and the lack of evidence supporting their existence. In other words, if intelligent life is common in the universe, how come we haven't detected any signs of it? This is what OpenAI's CEO Sam Altman wrote. One of my top four favorite explanations for the Fermi paradox is that biological intelligence always eventually creates machine intelligence, which wipes out biological life and for some reason decides to make itself undetectable. Don't play this off lightly. Even if there is only a very, very slim chance of this to happen, human extinction is a pretty high stake. If we can't align AI with our interests, dystopia and even extinction are not out of the question. Ilya Sutskever, the chief scientist of OpenAI, points this out as well. And you also want to be in a world where your degree of alignment keeps of increasing faster than the capability of the models. Like I think, with the, so here's what I would say. I think with the current level of capabilities, I think we have a pretty good set of ideas of how to align them. But I would not underestimate the difficulty of alignment of models that are actually smarter than us, of models that are capable of misrepresenting their intentions. That's exactly the problem. Yes, with enough caution, we can probably adjust a human-level intelligence AI to collaborate with us. But an AI that is magnitude smarter than all of us combined? How would we convince it to listen to us and act in our interests? I don't even say it's impossible. It's just a very different problem. Failing to do so doesn't necessarily lead to humanity vanishing, but could create a dystopian world for us. This is why everyone at OpenAI is constantly talking about AI alignment in every podcast you can find of them. The highest risks are an AI that doesn't want what we want, or an AI in the hands of someone who doesn't want what humanity wants. You just need a little bit of nihilism and chaos GPT is born. Yes, this thing actually exists right now. 
It is also basically impossible for all of humanity to agree on what the correct alignment of an AI would look like. And on top of that, no one knows what a good regulatory framework would contain and how to even enforce it in the first place. Sprinkle in the game theoretic prisoner's dilemma and an AI arms race just seems like an obvious result. To prevent that, international cooperation and dialogue between countries would be essential. If history shows us anything, this is really hard. To transition from this dystopian view to a more hopeful one, I want to state that technology itself is not good or bad per se. Unfortunately, many technologies are used for bad things first, whether it's nuclear weapons, cryptocurrencies and cybercrime, drones or potentially artificial intelligence. David Shapiro, an AI YouTuber whose work has inspired this video, stated that in a post-singularity world, human cognitive effort becomes irrelevant because of the abundance of knowledge and superhuman cognitive abilities of the ASI. While this may seem shocking at first, the cognitive contributions of individual humans are already irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. So nothing really changes on an individual basis here. The biggest difference is that unsolved problems out there in the world suddenly start getting solved at a quicker pace. Imagining a hopeful outcome really boils down to thinking about what kind of problems we have and what would the world look like if we solve those problems. Think energy batteries and nuclear fusion. In health, it could be getting rid of all diseases, and potentially agriculture, water quality and food security to feed a growing population. These are just examples. Space exploration and making humanity a multiplanetary species are not far down the list, and neither is longevity, increasing lifespans of humans, or why not cyborgs altogether? If we should make these things happen is a completely different question. I'm just listing things that could potentially be possible. You could have completely personalized AI-generated entertainment, eradicate language barriers through real-time translation, get the best learning experience with AI being your mentor, and so much more. I will get to why you would still learn things in a minute. With the cognitive capabilities it has, an ASI would take over most human jobs that we currently have across every single domain. I am not a big fan of universal basic income at the current stage, but in a post-ASI world, there simply has to be something like UBI. This could lead to a greater emphasis on creativity, exploration and self-improvement. Education may shift towards cultivating unique human traits and fostering interdisciplinary learning. This is all very much in my ballpark and very different compared to how the current education system works, so I'd like to be hopeful here. Some predictions I've seen before include that in such an abundant utopia, there is no point for global conflict, so war isn't really a thing anymore. We talked about crazy stuff like cyborgs and space travel, but stopping all global conflict seems like the most pipe dreamy of them all to me. I believe there will always be power hungry people who want control. Until it shrinks to a size of one or fewer, humanity will never stop fighting itself. But fight about what exactly? Scarce resources. Many resources, including land, are still scarce in a post-ASI world. Given enough time, even that could partly change. Asteroid mining is one crazy idea here. What you might fear is that an ASI would create meaninglessness for humans. It does everything better than we do, so what's the point anymore? It replaces us in our jobs and maybe even eradicates our purpose altogether. But that's not necessarily true. The abundance of knowledge capital could lead to all of humanity becoming part of a leisure class like we have seen in ancient Rome. We can just focus on doing what we want to do. In a YouTube comment I read an example of a musician saying that if AI creates the most amazing pieces of music that are unattainable for this person to create, that doesn't change their relationship to music at all. There are already artists who produce unattainable masterpieces. The enjoyment comes from the act of making music itself. And this translates for most things we do for enjoyment. Just think about chess for example. Computers are already way better at chess than humans are. Did we stop playing because of that? No. Humans want to do things and want to be challenged. And there is an endless amount of physical and mental challenges you can undergo, whether there is an ASI or not. Seneca criticized the decadent lifestyle of the leisure class as a sign of moral decay and societal decline. He said that the pursuit of luxury is a hollow and fleeting pursuit that could not bring true happiness or fulfillment. And I agree with that. But the cool thing is that while ASI could give us abundance, make us live longer and all the things I've listed before, it doesn't really help with the hard and most interesting questions. These are not measurable, they are personal, they depend on interpretation. We can still ponder about the meaning of life and enjoy subjective experiences. 
I hope this makes your mind wander a little bit. This video can to some degree be seen as an extension of my video about the digital renaissance I did last year, which is still my favorite video I ever made. So go and check that out next. Thank you for watching.